Good late afternoon, and thanks for being still for the last presentation. Uh, I will talk about a number of my students' projects that integrate technology with design, and especially look at technology as a way to inform uh, design thinking. Uh, we are surrounded by technology, and technology makes us great. We breathe it, we think through it, ultimately informs all our kind of faculties, and makes us to kind of suburban uh, individuals in the sense that technology gets embedded and at some point there's no firm uh, division between us and technology. We go with a cell phone, we often prefer to take this as our own device, we have a wallet. So in our lives we kind of mediate this kind of extend ourselves to technology and the uh, interesting uh, presentation of video games is exactly this uh, situation where you live outside in a box and the box may be shared virtually in the cloud. But uh, kind of going back to a uh, cultural DNA theme, uh, I just wanted to talk about the aspects how present culture is kind of is um, defined by the culture of hacking, uh, authorship, replication of, uh, of ownership and civil disobedience, but in a sense uh, how we progress and how we do design. First example is a uh, a couple of students came to me in the studio and they talked about doing algae facade. They wanted to do this kind of replication, but it's the next step in the design that Arm did for all the exhibits in, um, in Hamburg, Germany. And I was very quick to tell them that they really need to do uh, algae facade. They have to be real because if we are having a full discussion in vacuum. We could have real amplifications measures. So I told them that you have to get the algae, you have to build systems so we can monitor and see results. And uh, they contacted somebody at Stanford. The biology scientist was very happy that somebody's interested in his species of algae. So we got quite a few samples and students started generating the whole kind of um, um, uh, feeding, uh, keeping them growing, and you can see in the bottle, water bottles, uh, the whole 14-day uh, cycle they went. They also went on the through the traditional way of defining uh, architecture, looking at some panels, looking at the details to make sure it works, and having this kind of understanding through dimensionality. But again, when finally they had to build the, the prototype that it actually works. That's kind of was very important for me, and also for the whole educational part of the uh, design. The prototype was made out of obviously algae sitting in a small aquarium, but then you have to have microcontrollers, temperature controls, you will have to irrigate the system in case it freezes, you discharge, you open the valve on the bottom, and they hope to have a fully functional uh, kind of interconnected system that becomes part of the um, part of the design. And what I think was interesting is that once you go from the previous couple of slides on this kind of part of architecture, we are very accustomed either in a conceptual stage like this or more like technical aspects. Once you do this, you have to start thinking in an algorithmic way, you have a procedure, what if. So I told them if you want to throw a program in a controller, you have to have a set of actions, set of decisions that have to be reflected in what happens when. And actually, you know, doing different tasks will see what happens if you have eyes, it doesn't pump really, it's just preventing from freezing. So I think at some point, if you being introduced technology, I think the whole design thinking has to be quantitative and has to be somehow connected to the decision-making process, even if the decisions are made by the microcontroller. And ultimately, they, uh, I asked them to build the systems, this is just to demonstrate how the things work. So uh, they had right now have three different uh, pieces, but the one with the read, this would follow uh, my, a maximum light exposure. So you have you would have situations that each of the panels would have a different uh, functionality. Now the question, okay, I think that's okay. Um, back to Very simple, so bubble machine, 
the actual installation where people would you would blow the microphone and on the part of the room you will have bubbles coming. And ultimately it's exercise about prototyping and going one step at a time. It, students have an idea that you can so and practitioners too, you can solve design in one sense. There's a difference between designing a building and designing a car like Cornwall was talking about because it's a iterative process. You keep redoing the same part. So in this case, students were working a number of, of steps, redoing the same part. The first one was, this is the first one, the second one, each time addressing the next uh, issue, maybe uh, uh, draining the soap and so on. So I think it was uh, very interesting in a sense, sorry, this way. And then kind of looking maybe on the more fun part, how do you actually integrate, how does it work, and what it can do, uh, looking at this kind of medium as uh, fluorescent, for example. Uh, so, and uh, let me just look at the next one, just to give you a sense of uh, a little bit of, of how it works. And, um, aspect was kind of a, a, a using a mode system to kind of hack the game and develop the game for another purpose. This was actually a student working on a haptic lab and connecting to the Unity game um, and work with our biomedical engineers to develop a physical therapy for stroke patients. We started first as a glove with a number of with Adreno and uh, feedback sensors like vibrators. And then kind of pretty quickly realized that it's much easier to actually take advantage of the um, of the leap sensor, which is kind of extension. It's something like Kinect, which is much smaller, designed for hands, and develop a number of kind of games for rehabilitation where patients actually could practice. And the idea was that uh, what was interesting for engineers in this case is that a very hard, and physical therapists was that very it's very hard to understand how much patients practice. You send them to the home, you tell them you should do this twice a day, and no one knows what they do, they come back and they say there's no results. So the idea of kind of understanding, tracking user, uh, uh, tracking uh, patients, also giving them a uh, success rate, maybe 80%, so they have always encouragement, at the same time you can adaptively control the level of, mm -hmm. of exercise and it's interesting because with the game, it's, it may seem like a very simple assignment, but if you are a stroke patient, even moving your hand and opening your hand uh, is actually a major uh, exercise. Another example of hacking the gameplay was actually a student who developed a mode for um, uh, Minecraft. Everybody knows roughly what, is, what it is. And in this case, he developed the whole set of new bugs and new kind of economy. So it was. Um, kind of survival version of the, of the Minecraft, although he um, um, started with the concrete part, and you would have to always start with a balanced world, and you have to always deal with pollution, air, water, and soil, and uh, kind of you know, negotiate between different uh, elements that contribute to the pollution or help you to mitigate this. And it was kind of interesting in the sense that we actually had a couple of faculty from business school because setting up economy, it's a very different situation. We have a number of factors and make it kind of balanced at the same time exciting. It's, it's actually a very uh, interesting part. But what is, what is also exciting is that it's relatively easy to develop the system because the idea of modes is that you're based on something that already exists and you just add another component. To make the game more interesting, he actually introduced the student this kind of uh, emergency situation where you have a, you know, a catastrophe and your uh, system is being completely recomputed. You have to adjust, you know, the, the numbers can change based on like, uh, some event. So also it, it kind of goes towards <coughs> resiliency, you can't just function on the edge of possibility of just bring, the brink of uh, your system because at any point the equation can change. Uh, he introduced a number of things like recyclables and you can actually take these things and really get to different materials. 
to get new materials for new types of blocks. And uh, another aspect was a kind of connecting built environment with uh, digital media. Uh, it started as a kind of digital uh, um, um, media materiality with different kind of displays. Students worked on the media facade. There was also adaptive at a number of screens behind and started with the experimenting of how you kind of treat the glass in different ways and um, ultimately doing some picture design, ultimately having this kind of addressable LED displays. And this is where they left uh, the project, which is kind of all, well, always the class ends at some point. But some ideas I like to kind of push f further with students. So we had the next student who was kind of looking at kind of tectonic aspect of the facade to break away with just the pixels and provide three dimensionality. And in this case, you have some Arduinos, some tectonic LEDs, some displays. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, this uh, went further to looking at how you can connect, like in this case, um, Android app with uh, through a Bluetooth or Arduino to display. And what I was interesting that, and I think it's very interesting for students to understand that one display like this, 8x8 matrix, is the same as it is. So for a, you may think it's just display, but then you display, give it a designer, and designer sees 8x8 display as a kind of much bigger expression. So I think this is where hacking happens of technology and becomes, in the eyes of designer, something that is very different. But again, this kind of iterative process is step by step. Uh, it starts uh, helping, you know, a promoting a way to collaborate or author the facades. And that's pretty much it. So, uh, kind of bring first the point about culture uh, DNA. I feel that present days, in terms of digital media, especially media that engage the whole society, not just sits with part of the society, but with everybody, it's really about reappropriating of technology. We are afraid of uh, surveillance, we are afraid of a, a technology being part of the kind of a have some have not, but ultimately it's it's a way by society to uh, take control of a lot of I think a lot of things and it becomes a building block for changes for appropriation. Thank you. Thanks.